Hello and welcome to another Blender Basics episode. In this episode I will be showing you how to use all of the tools in this Mesh Tools Add uh, panel. Okay, so tab into Edit Mode to get access to these. Um, we'll begin with the Extrude Region. This tool is just like pressing E, so if I hit Extrude Region, it will take the entire th the everything that's selected and extrude it. I'll just go ahead and delete that now. So now we're back to the default cube again. If I do s extrude individual, however, what we can do is we can oops, extrude individual along the Z. And that only brought up what we had selected, the, uh, the panels themselves, or the sides. It left the the center face in the same position, and you can create bowls, I guess, with this. I don't really know what you'd use this for, or not off the top of my head anyway. Okay, so delete that, and I believe the next one we can do with a plane, yeah. Okay, so now I'll be showing you the subdivide. So hit subdivide, and down here you can see that it has a number of different sliders. So number of cuts, fairly self-explanatory. Um, smoothness doesn't seem to do much. Um, it might do stuff with other bigger meshes, but with just a basic plane, it doesn't do much. Neither does the quad corner type. Uh, or try mode, whatever. The fractal, kind of fun. You can generate landscapes with this. Uh, so you probably won't have to go much over one if you ever do go to one. But if you go way too high, it just explodes. So don't do that. Um, the seed is just the seed, how it runs through the algorithm for coming up with the fractal. Um, otherwise, yeah, that is the subdivide tool. Next one is loop cuts. I think we've, let's see, there we go. I'll just delete that now. I think I did a little bit with uh, loop cuts in the last tutorial or the last episode. So this is just like pressing control R There. So a loop cut, the little pink line shows up and it generates a loop cut. So if you hit Control R, it does the exact same thing. So Control R, Control R, oops, let's duplicate. Loop cut looks exactly the same. Now, next one, duplicate. Just make a selection, hit that button, and you've duplicated what you selected. It's the same as pressing, uh, I believe it's Shift D. And if you hover over this, it says Shift D. So yeah, there are shortcuts to run all of these, except for this one, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave these two for a little bit later in this, because they use a different setup a little bit. The knife tool is kind of a cool one. What you can do is say you want to create a shape but you don't want a bunch of loop cuts everywhere because it'll screw something up over on the other side. Um, say maybe on a face or so. What you can do is you can use this knife tool and you can just make a slice. However, that's kind of messy. Wouldn't want to do that. But as you can see, if you press K to bring up the knife tool. Um, down here it shows you different options you can do. So um, say I want to, for angle constraint, as you can see without that on we have full range and it can get really messy. If you want to keep it cleaner just press C and you're stuck to 90 45 and 90 again, so 
horizontal, vertical, and 45 degrees. So you can make things much cleaner. So how this works is you can do, you can just press, or you can click an edge or off the plane, doesn't matter. Click, click, and there we go. And then to make it actually do the operation of cutting it up, just hit the spacebar, and now we have a new cut. And it's a good cut. So doing this with loop cuts would have been a, an absolute pain. Uh, you'd probably have to do, you'd have to have a loop cut there, loop cut there, another loop cut, another loop cut, delete, that face, create a, a face there, face there, and there you go. So much easier to just draw it out, but either way works. I would highly suggest you use this one, not this one, because as you can see here, um, if I hadn't made these slices here, these loop cuts would have gone all the way through and they could have the potential to screw stuff up on this side of the mesh. So that is the cut tool. Now for the screw and spin tools. So go ahead, create a plane. We only want one vertice, and there isn't a uh, primitive for that. So there we go. Um, you can hit Control Shift C to um, bring up this little set origin menu. And then I'm going to just hit this uh, geometry origin. What that does is it takes whatever selected and plops it right there in the or centers it around the origin. Um, when you only have one vertice, it puts the vertice right at the origin. Very nice. Um, easy way of getting it centered. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to trace out a little shape. So you remember that can I showed you how to make using the cylinder. Uh, we'll do the exact same thing. So I'm not using a reference, so I don't know how this is going to turn out probably look more like a jar. Make sure that's at the origin. To bring up this menu, this properties menu or panel, you can just press N and yeah, that's gonna look a lot more like a jar than anything. There, that could work a little better. So make sure that this uh, 3D cursor is at the center of your object, or at the center of, I don't know how you'd put that, the center of the axes you wish to rotate around. And then go into top view, hit spin. I'm going to set this to 360 degrees and turn this up. 14 is probably my favorite for making a 360 degree rotation. and. There you have it. That didn't turn out as I had hoped. But yeah, what that does, it's kind of like a lathe. Anything you can do on a lathe, you could, I think you can do here. Maybe a little bit more. Because if, yeah, never mind. They got rid of that feature, I forgot. So there's a can, canister thing, uh, jar, whatever. Um, you can also make chess pieces and if you check out my tutorial on how to create a chess pawn, you can see how to use this to do that. Um, very handy little tool. The next one is also quite handy. So I only want one vertice again. And don't have to center it, I don't think. Actually, yeah, we do. So there we go. Bring that out and up. Mm. Yeah. And now, make sure this uh, cursor is in the middle, and hit screw, and turn up the turns, and it kind of generates a little screw. So now you can put your, your nut 
or your bolt head up on top and you'd have a little bolt here and that makes it a lot a lot a lot a lot easier to do than with anything or just modeling it by hand um, I don't even know how you'd model it by hand it wouldn't be fun though so there's that and of course there is also the uh, the add-on that allows you to create bolts and things very easily but if you don't want to use that you've always got the screw option um, for the screw if you want it to generate right um, or at least for the z-axis you got to be in front view if you want the spin to work properly and rotate around the z you have to be in top view so yeah they're kind of annoying that way and how they're opposite from each other but yeah just keep those in mind uh, those are very handy tools if you have any suggestions for other tools you want to see demonstrated please let me know in the comments below um, until next time, see you later.